Lionel MPC and the Spirit of 76 on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. In the early 1970s, America was desperately seeking direction. After surviving the Vietnam War, Watergate, hippies, polyester bell bottoms, and the Brady Bunch, the nation needed some common ground, a rebirth of common vision and values, and the bicentennial of the Declaration of Independence in 1976 became that unifying event. As early as 1966, Congress had created a committee to plan and execute a single large event for the bicentennial. This idea was scrapped, however, in 1973 in favor of promoting hundreds or even thousands of bicentennial-themed events throughout America, coordinated by the new Bicentennial Commission. American railroads, too, were looking for direction. Competition from road and air, combined with outdated federal regulations, led first to the dissolution of America's passenger rail fleet into the new government-sponsored Amtrak, then to the bankruptcy of one freight railroad after another, including the giant Penn Central in 1970. Many railroads, as a cost-saving measure, abandoned their proud, colorful paint schemes for more muted and cheaper black and blue paint. Yes, railroads themselves needed a new vision and a new direction. Lionel Trains was also at a crossroads. The Lionel Corporation had gone bankrupt and trains were now produced under license by the Fund Dimensions Model Products Corp, a division of General Mills Foods. MPC first stuck with tried and true post-war designs with a few improvements such as new axles and more colorful paint schemes, but MPC was looking to take Lionel in new directions with new products as well. Then everything came together. In 1972, someone at Seaboard Coastline Railroad realized that one of their upcoming order of General Electric U36B diesels would be numbered 1776. Realizing the public relations opportunity, SCL had General Electric apply a special commemorative paint scheme on the 1776, as well as spotlights so the special paint could be seen at night. Soon, the special locomotive was not only hauling freight across the Seaboard Coastline network, but also making public appearances in SCL's various communities and even across the nation. By 1974, hundreds of railroads, from mighty Class 1s to small industrial lines, were painting locomotives and sometimes cabooses in special bicentennial garb. Lionel, too, was inspired, and the 1974 catalog featured the firm's first new road diesel model since the 1950s, the General Electric U36B, and one of these new U36 diesels was decorated to copy the Seaboard Coastline 1776. In addition, Lionel also produced a bicentennial N5C porthole caboose in a scheme based on a Frisco prototype. Plus, there were three brand new wood-sided boxcars, each with a special, highly detailed graphics highlighting one of the original 13 United States. More cars would be released, four in 1975 and six in 1976, until a complete 13-car commemorative train could be assembled by early 1976. This was Lionel's first all-separate sale collectible set, and its success would lead to more such items in the future. Above the black sheet metal frame, Lionel's model was an accurate representation of the prototype's paint and markings down to the seal of the United States on the side. The prototype's frame and trucks were painted blue, however. There were two variations of the 1776 model, one with a plain frame and one with Seaboard Coastline printed on the frame, similar to the prototype. While the plain version is more common, various price guides agree that there's really no difference in collector value between the two different versions. MPC produced a third version specifically for the Train Collectors Association in 1976. This version was numbered 1976 and featured white handrails, blue walkways and a blue fuel tank, and the TCA logo along with the U.S. seal. This version came with a matching set of three short streamlined passenger cars. 
In 2016, Lionel reissued the locomotive as number 1776, the Patriot. While this version kept the white handrails and blue underframe of the original, and includes additional The Patriot markings, differentiating it from the 1970s originals. The new version also featured Lion Chief Command Control. The body of the U36 is a Lionel-ized model, much like the GG1. All the major features are present, but the model is short of scale length to accommodate 027 curves and to utilize the GP7 frames. Meanwhile, the cab and radiator are a bit larger than scale to accommodate the motor and to balance the overall look of the locomotive. Speaking of control, both the original 1776 and 1976 versions featured single Pullmore type motors, three position reverse and headlights at both ends. The diesels utilize the same motor and trucks of contemporary Jeep locomotives with the sheet metal frames and handrails and twin rubber tires for traction. The GP-style Blomberg trucks are actually appropriate for the 1776, as SCL's U36Bs all rode on trade-in Blomberg trucks from old EMDF units to reduce costs. The caboose is a basic N5C porthole type with illumination. As stated before, the bicentennial graphics are sharp and are based on a Frisco prototype, although that caboose was a wide vision type that Lionel had not yet produced. The cars for the set were made from all new tooling in the style of wood-sided boxcars, similar to the cars that were common on U.S. railroads between the World Wars. Each car is specially decorated in a unique color scheme, featuring sharp graphics with the state flag, outline and state capital, state motto and other information. The cars are numbered according to the order of the ratification of the U.S. Constitution, which is also printed on each car. Each car also features a Revolution-era 13-star flag, and the graphics on each car are very sharp and far superior to what was available to Lionel in the post-war era. While not officially part of the series, a number 7700 Uncle Sam car was also available in 1975, and some collectors place it among the Spirit of 76 cars. Since each car was available separately, and some were made in differing quantities, they have different values on the collector market. The number 7601 Delaware car is the easiest to find, followed by the group of New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. The number 7602 Pennsylvania is also common, but slightly more difficult to find than this second group. New Hampshire, Maryland, and South Carolina make up the next group, followed by North Carolina and Rhode Island. Two cars were produced in significantly lower numbers, New York, and the rarest of all of the Spirit of 76 cars, State of Virginia. I have read in various online sources that the Virginia car is harder to find because a large percentage of the limited quantity was actually purchased by the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, for distribution to various state officials and dignitaries, but I can find no reliable evidence to support this claim. However, this car alone can demand $150 or more in mint condition, about 30% of the average value of the complete set in today's market. Each of the set components came in a special blue Spirit of 76 box, the condition of which is a factor in the value of each set component. The sales success of the Spirit of 76 series led Lionel to produce other bicentennial-themed trains, such as the Liberty Bell Special starter set, the Preamble Express F3, the Jeremiah O'Brien and Norfolk and Western GP9 diesels, and more, and even some HO scale items. Manufacturers in other scales also hopped aboard the bicentennial train, so to speak. Most famously, Tyco produced a popular HO scale bicentennial. Well, actually, several of them. Today, Lionel's Spirit of 76 set is one of the iconic Lionel products of the MPC era. Its sharp colors, history, and collectability make it highly desirable for collectors nearly 50 years after its production. In the real world, special bicentennial diesels were generally repainted into standard railroad colors at their first post-bicentennial overhaul and returned to regular service. 
The original number 1776 joined its place in the Seaboard Coastline roster, eventually ending up with CSX before being scrapped alongside its U-36 brethren. Will there be a patriotic revival for the semi-quincentennial in 2026? Say that three times real fast. In 2016, Congress created the America 250 Foundation, an organization similar to the Bicentennial Commission, tasked with organizing and planning events to commemorate the 2026 milestone. Personally, I'm hopeful that, despite the current political schisms in the country, this anniversary will remind all Americans of the values, traditions, customs, and beliefs that have united us for two and a half centuries. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and if so, please let your friends, neighbors, and especially YouTube know by giving us a like, share, subscribe, or comment. And also, don't forget to check out the video description for handy links to products and other videos I've mentioned in this video. So, treat every day like Independence Day and keep those trains running until our next episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks.